Let me just get that situated out of my way. And uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to a special Mother's Day edition of Yoga. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. So if you are a mother, uh, if you have a mother, or if you came from a mother, and I think that it kind of covers just about everybody, you have a reason to honor someone today. Happy Mother's Day, or if you have a reason to be honored today. Hi, Roger. Hi, Tammy. Welcome. All right. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, the playlist for today is a special version of a Mother's Day playlist. So I provide the link in the group fitness uh, group. Um, and if you're uh, unable to find it, maybe something like Liquid Mind or Aeroshanti would be a nice, uh, nice ambient thing to play in the background. Okay? So I do have the lights dimmed. I want to start in a restful state uh, today and then we'll get moving. It's going to be more of a gentle type of yoga today just because we're having a broader audience uh, that's joining us today. Just want to make sure we are able to accommodate everybody. So let's go ahead and find a seated position or a laying down position, something that's comfortable, something where you can just settle in, allow yourself to find some stillness and some relaxation to begin with. <clears throat> And as we begin, we just want to start by just trying to find that relaxation, trying to find that stillness, not only of our body, not only of our body, but maybe all the chatter, allowing ourselves to just direct our attention, direct our minds towards being right here, right here in our practice today. Allowing yourself this time, this time for you, and this time to just provide this next 75 minutes of time that is an investment in your health and in your well-being. Through our practice today, we'll reach into a physical practice, but we'll also reach into a mental practice, allowing ourselves to keep our minds focused on where we're at right now. And one way we allow ourselves to do that is to begin breathing in and out and just noticing that breath. So start deepening your inhales and lengthening those exhales and start to pay attention to those inhales and exhales. And the more we pay attention to those inhales and exhales, the less we pay attention to some other things that may be more distracting. If we think about the word mom or mother, one way to look at it is, is in the term of a noun it's a person who does work of 20 for free. And oftentimes a mother is like jumping out of an airplane without a parachute and with a bunch of people and helping those folks open their chutes and so they land safely. But at the end of the day when the mother hits the ground, she lands on her feet because who else, who else will be around to get up and cook dinner? And that's why perhaps the reflection of the word mom spells wow, spells wow. And if we look at the world's mother, Mother Teresa, and what she said, she said, sometimes moms often feel that they're doing, what they're doing is just a drop in the ocean. But just imagine, just imagine what the world would be like without that drop. It would be just a little bit less because of that missing drop. And so recognize the influence that moms have not only on their children, but on their families. And it's just simply beyond calculation. Simply beyond calculation. And so for those that you are celebrating or if you're being celebrated and honored yourself today, you deserve every bit of what it is. Every bit of that celebration, every bit of that gratitude, allow yourself to accept that. Oftentimes we don't like to accept, we sometimes get embarrassed to accept that gift of gratitude. We get a little bit humble. But this is your day, and this is your time. This is your time. You know, sometimes we hear these acronyms as of late, YOLO, you only live once. Or maybe FOMO, fear of missing out, okay? But sometimes, sometimes it's okay to just be okay with just relaxing, releasing, and having that time just for ourselves too. 
So allow yourselves to dedicate your time wherever you feel that you need to spend that time. Right now, we're gonna spend it in yoga. We'll begin in a seated position. So if you're lying down, go ahead and find that seated position. Take your time as we get there. And then as we find that seated position, just make sure it's comfortable somewhere where we can sit for just a little bit with a good, nice, tall posture. And we'll begin with just working on our hands a little bit. Let's initially bring our hands to prayer. And then let's take our left thumb and just start pressing it into the palms of our right hand. I'm going to go turn up the light so we can see that just a little bit better. And just start massaging through the palm of our hands from the thumb and into the palm and press that left thumb into the hands. Let me go grab the lights real quick. Very nice. And still with that left thumb pressing into the palms of the hands, let's start working the fingers. Working the fingers and just a just little bit of circles working those fingers from the base of the finger and outward working towards the fingertips. So we literally are going to be working from the fingertips to our toes today. Just little circles as we give a little bit of a nudge and a little bit of pressure pulling out, pulling out away from the palm of the hands, okay? And when you're done with that right hand, go ahead and switch over to the left hand, take that right thumb and just press it into the palm of your left hand. <clears throat> Good, and just press it in, make sure we work those muscles near the thumb, right through the center, in the middle part of that palm, just start relaxing and releasing those muscles in our palm. And then we'll work from the base of our pinky finger towards the pinky finger, top of that finger. And then just keep working each individual finger, just drawing little circles with those thumbs, a little pressure outward. Nice, and keep working. And then with those hands, let's release both hands and then just make some fists with those hands and squeeze as much as we can. And then open those hands as wide as we can and stretch them out. Big, big high fives right there. And then again, squeeze them, squeeze them with all the strength you have in those hands. And then open them up and stretch them out. Stretch them out as wide as you can. Let's do that one more time. Give a nice squeeze on those hands and then open them up. Very nice. Let's bring our hands to the heart center into prayer. Let's deepen that breath now, inhaling and exhaling. Again, focusing on that breath, allowing that breath to just reach in as deeply as we can, sitting tall in that seated position, and then exhaling and completely emptying the full capacity of our lungs. Maybe feeling our shoulders lift and then hunch over with those exhales. Lift on the inhales and hunch over on the exhales. Keep doing that inhale. Just hear the sound. Hear the sound of that breath through your nose or mouth. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Let's maintain the depth of that breath to the best of our abilities throughout our practice today. With our hands in prayer, let's begin pressing those hands a little bit more diligently toward each other. Pressing those fingertips toward each other, those knuckles toward each other, and those thumbs. Press. And then just push those elbows side to side as we press and engage those hands toward each other. Engaging those muscles through our shoulders and our chest, and just using those elbows side to side just to make sure that we have that appropriate engagement on those hands. Keeping those hands pressed, we're going to just shoot those hands straight up to the sky, 
and bring our biceps to the sides of our ears. Keep those hands pressed. Okay, no need to lock the elbows at the top. Good, and then exhale and bring those hands right back down. Keep pressing those hands toward each other. Good, a nice big inhale as we draw those fingertips up toward the sky, shoot them straight up, ears between those arms, and then exhale, come right back down to our heart center. A lot of dynamic action right there, a lot of tension going on through those hands, but I promise it's gonna feel so good once we're able to release that tension. Keep it going, inhale and exhale. I can feel my arms shaking, maybe you can feel your arms shaking. I know, I know. And then inhale and exhale one last time. Uh, and then this next time, release some of the tension, but shoot those hands up and keep them together. Elbows forward, then bring the thumbs to the back of the neck. Okay, bend those elbows like a little shark fin and just touch the back of your neck if you're able with those thumbs. Pressing those elbows back, ears still between those biceps. Very nice. Let's shoot those hands right back up, inhale, and then exhale right back to our heart center. Let's give those shoulders a little relief. Just rest those hands onto our laps and start rolling our shoulders forward to back or back to forward. Still sitting nice and tall, still maintaining that three-part deep inhale and exhale. Even though we're not necessarily connecting movement and breath, we can still maintain that deep breath. Switch directions on those circles. And then let's bring some stillness to those shoulders and start working the neck. Sit nice and tall, exhale our chin to our chest and then right ear to right shoulder on the exhale. Inhale back to center and then exhale left ear, left shoulder. Not trying to force anything. We're gonna do a little bit more on the neck a little bit later where we're gonna get deeper into it and just gonna rock side to side. Inhale to the center and exhale to the side, ears to those shoulders. One more time, either direction. Nice and gentle. Awesome. Now let's bring those hands out to the side, those arms, just nice letter T arms, and bring those fingertips up to the sky like we're pushing the walls away on either side. And now a little rock side to side, little rock side to side, just engage our core and just start to loosen up through our hips. A little rock like we're pushing those walls side to side and the rooms moving side to side. Keeping those fingertips up, pressing those hands out, driving side to side and come back to center. Keep those arms out there and start drawing some circles with those hands. Forward to back or back to forward. Make those circles nice and small. It doesn't have to be super big just yet, just yet. Ooh, yeah, building some heat into those shoulders. Good. And then put those fingertips down towards the ground and then start broadening those circles. Maybe switch directions on those circles. Make those circles a little bit bigger if those fingertips point down towards the ground now. You can just work on those shoulders, not getting those wrists working as part of the process. Very nice. Bring those arms to stillness, palms up toward the sky, and those letter T arms, and then rest those fingertips on to our shoulders. Take a nice big inhale and draw those elbows farther back, squeezing those shoulder blades together, arching our back, and then exhale, round through our spine, separate those shoulders, tap those elbows in front. Inhale and look up, arch that back, engage those muscles that border our spine, Exhale, round through and engage our core. Press our spine towards the back of the room. Keep going, inhale, look up, and exhale on down. Good, keep going, just like that. Two more times on the inhales, and the exhales. Good. 
Come back to neutral spine, hands still right there at the shoulders. Let's bring those hands behind our neck, interlocking those fingers, thumbs traced down our spine. Let's bring those elbows forward without pulling on the neck. Just start dropping our head down, rounding through our spine, and just draw as we arch or round our back elbows coming towards our legs, towards our legs. Just to try and get a nice deep stretch on those muscles that border our spine without pulling on the neck. Breathe. And if it's comfortable for you, breathe in as deeply as you can. Try and feel those ribs expand in this position so you get an even deeper stretch. Sit back up nice and tall. Come back up gently, good. Awesome, let's bring those hands down to the ground, fingertips facing forward, hands just slightly behind our tailbone. Good, inhale nice and tall. Exhale, chin to our chest and then right ear to right shoulder. Right ear to right shoulder. Keeping that ear right there. Take that left hand, bring it behind our back. Bring it behind our back, almost onto our uh, right hip. And then with that right hand, just gently rest it onto our left ear. Just to stretch into that shoulder and that neck. Relax your jaw. Space between your teeth. Just a little bit of pressure with that hand on the ear. Nice. Come back to neutral with that neck. Hands back behind the tailbone. Good. Exhale, chin to our chest, and then left ear to left shoulder. And then this time, bring that right hand behind your back. Just draw it all the way behind your back. You can rest it on your tailbone if you want. Or just trying to touch your left hip bone, the back of your hand. And then with that left hand, just gently rest it on our right ear. And then a little nudge. Just a little nudge to get even deeper into that shoulder and neck on the right side. Very nice. Let's come back to neutral, and then we'll do a little seated cat and cow. Just go ahead and grab one to the front of our shins. Grab onto the front of our shins. We're gonna squeeze those shoulder blades together. Inhale, look up and arch our back and try and feel that squeeze between those shoulder blades in the middle and upper part of your back, pulling on the front of those knees or shins. And then as we exhale, we round that spine. Just sit back into it. Let those arms feel like they're lengthening as we feel a little bit of that tension across the front of our shins. Just sit back into it and round through those shoulders. Separate those shoulders and stretch between them. And then just flow through that inhale. As we look up, arch, pull on those legs, and then exhale and lean back into it, using our whole body together to just deepen, deepen this stretch, deepen this stretch, and then flow through that at the pace of your breath, inhaling and exhaling. We'll go two more times in each direction. You're moving at your own pace, and that pace is guided by your breath, just making sure that any posture we get in today is still met with that breath, and that breath is still free-flowing. That's just our body's guide of saying, you're moving the right way for you today, okay? Just one of those physical ways to feel that. Okay, we're gonna come onto our backs now. I'm gonna slightly move back here. Okay, onto my mat eventually. There we go. So we can either grab behind those knees and lock those ankles, just roll onto our back. And we're going to bring our knees up to tabletop. So that means they're right above our hips and feet up off the ground. If for some reason this bothers your lower back, there's nothing wrong with you. It just bothers your lower back. Keep those heels down onto the ground. Otherwise, hands to the side, or you can begin rocking side to side. Windshield wipering those knees. Windshield wipering those knees. It's called belly twist. Belly twist or almost like a little metronome type of motion here from side to side. Okay, try to avoid those knees coming all the way down to the ground. That's a little bit too much stress
far lower back, but just think about maybe 12 inches off the ground. That should be good. You might feel that, you know, you'll definitely feel one hip lifting off the ground. Okay, but we're trying to not feel, you know, a little bit, not trying to feel any pain in our lower back, of course. Okay. All right. One more time each direction on these windshield wipers side to side. We'll come to stillness, grab onto those knees and start drawing circles with those knees. Move those knees with your hands. Just grab onto the front of those knees. Okay, pick any direction, out to in or in to out, but they're moving away from each other. Okay, like they're in a mirror image of each other. Perfect. Awesome, just working those hips now. Let's go ahead and switch directions on those circles. There we go, like egg beaters. Getting them going. Again, if it bothers your back, those heels can stay right on the ground. We can still do this and just move those knees around, okay? Move those knees around or at least have one foot on the ground. All right. Okay, we're going to lengthen those legs now. Hands to the side of our hips. Bring those feet up and draw circles with those feet like we're painting the soles of our feet on the ceiling or painting with the soles of our feet on the ceiling. Getting direction on those circles and then switch directions. Very nice. We'll come to stillness with those feet. Put a bend in those knees. Set the whole foot onto the ground. Feet and knees about hip distance apart. We're going to start doing some bridges. We're going to lift on the inhales. Drive those hips up to the sky. And then on the exhale, gently release on down. Keep going through that inhale and lift. And we're focusing on our lower back as we drive on up. We'll definitely engage those glutes a little bit, but think about the lower back and the muscles that border our spine. And if you're going a little bit high enough, you're going to start to feel a little stretch across the top of those quads and in through the hips. Let's do three more. Inhale and exhale, releasing down. There we are. Good. Getting just the fronts of those legs working, pushing, pushing straight down. And when we're done with three of those, we'll keep those hips on the ground, draw the soles of our feet together, let those knees open up, reclining goddess with a lift. Hands still to the side here. Press on the pinky toe side of your feet to lift those hips so that we're driving into our pinky toe side of our feet and our shoulders. Squeezing those glutes to lift those hips, drive them up toward the sky. A deeper stretch or adductors in the inside part of our legs and still working our lower back. Just loosening up and warming up our bodies. Very nice. Gentle, deep stretches. That's what we're going to get today. One more time, inhale and exhale. Let's draw those knees to our chest. Wrap those arms around those legs. Give those knees a little squeeze just to release our lower back and stretch our glutes and our hamstrings. All right, so we're gonna come up to a seated position, grab behind those knees or onto one leg and just drop that leg down, there we go. And let's find plank position. We're gonna turn all the way over. We'll start from an all fours position, if that works for you. Separate those hands, spread those fingers out, get those shoulders right above those hands, and then curl those toes, lengthen those legs, plank. All right, so from high plank. Draw those shoulders just a little bit forward, maybe in front of those wrists or even in front of those fingertips just to warm up those wrists and hands. Make sure we have strong hands, strong arms, and a straight body from the crown of our head through to our heels. We can also be on our knees here. Also be on our knees. Good. Let's move to downward dog by lifting our hips and drawing our ears between our arms. And in this downward dog, begin rocking side to side. Bringing our hips to the mat's edge. Let's get a little stretch on the outside of those hips. And then just naturally, we're dropping one heel down and lifting the other heel. So we're getting a stretch of our calves and heels and arches here. Just a little sway side to side. Good. All right. 
from this downward dog position. We're going to work those knees a little bit, a little crouching downward dog. So we come to stillness, and we inhale, lift our heels up, and then put a bend in our knees, exhale towards the mats. Inhale our hips back up and exhale our heels down. Let's just keep flowing through that. Use that breath. Inhale as we rise toward the sky. Exhale toward the ground. Inhale, rise back up and exhale, heels down. Keep going through that. It's about three more sequences. Good. Just to get those knees working. Of course, it's a little bit gentler way to get those knees kind of bending. So if it's bothering your knees, reduce the range of motion. If it's still bothering your knees, don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, or just keep the heels back and bring the hips back towards those heels, okay? That's a way to get it done. All right. One last time here. Awesome. We're going to find stillness in Downward Dog. And then we're going to float our right foot up to the sky, three-legged dog. Go ahead and sweep that right foot forward and come on to our left knee. Runner's lunge, knee down. Float those thumbs up to the back of the room, reach up and arch back. Good. Exhale, hands down, straddle that front foot, come back to down dog, same thing, other side. Inhale that left foot, it's nice and high, and then sweep it through and bring it down, runners, or that right knee down, and sweep those hands up, thumbs to the back of the room. And now let's keep flowing through this at your own pace. Straddle left front foot, press back to downward dog, right foot this time, inhale it up, three-legged dog, sweep it through, left knee down, and then thumbs to the back of the room. Keep going at your own pace. Inhale, bring it through, kneeling runners, and arch it back. Excellent. We'll keep going to where we get about a total of five here. Okay, but we'll just go until we go. We'll just go until we go, right? That's right. Good. As we reach back, feel that stretch through the hips. One more time each side. Let's do that. How about it? Good. Pressing those hips in. Reach it on back. All right, one more time. One more time. That left side, perhaps, depending on where you're at. All right, very nice. We'll meet back in, downward facing dog. Excellent. And then we're gonna step that right foot to the outside of the hand and then that left foot to the outside of the hand. So we get a nice wide squat and then keep those hands toward the ground. Start heel toeing our feet towards each other. I'll turn to the side so you can see that or front so you can see that and start lifting those hips up, lengthening those legs. Let's find forward fold. Those hands might rise up to not be touching the ground anymore, so maybe we need that support of our shins or that block. Forward fold is where we're gonna find and find some stillness just for a moment here. Good. So still a little soft bend in those knees as we find forward fold. But we're trying to find a little relaxing position here, relaxing through the shoulders, let the crown of our head fall towards the ground, let our shoulders relax and just release any tension that we're carrying. Okay, I'm just rocking a little bit forward and back on my feet. That's something you could do. We can also, if we want, get into a toe bind, just piece fingers on the big toe. Let's get a little deeper into this or grab behind the ankles or heels onto that forward fold. Good. Just a few more breaths right here. Find the comfort. Find the relaxing nature of this pose. Very nice. We're being mindful of our core and our lower back. We're just going to lift up and lengthen our spine to airplane pose, which means we're going to make our upper body parallel to the ground. Parallel to the ground. Nice strong back and nice strong core. Okay, those legs didn't move at all, still a soft bend in those knees, but maybe think about the weight of our body shifting to those heels so we feel maybe a little bit deeper stretch to those hamstrings and glutes. 
Keeping our upper body right where it's at, we're gonna put a deeper bend in our knee, draw our tailbone down towards the ground, resting our ribs on top of those quads. Almost like we're in a ski jump position right here. And then we're gonna lengthen those legs back to that airplane pose. Let's do that four more times. Exhale, drop down. Ski jump and then inhale and lift. Good. Exhale, drop down. Inhale and lift. Keep going. Exhale, bend those knees, sit into it. Strength, core, focus. Inhale and lift. Awesome. One last time. Exhale down. Inhale and lift. The next time we exhale and bend those knees, let's bring those thumbs up toward the sky and bring our back up and our chest up. Just a little bit more chair pose. There we go. All right, we can also have our hands at heart center if this bothers our shoulders. Very nice. A few breaths right here as we sit into this chair pose. Find that comfy chair for you. Make sure it works for you. One where we can just breathe freely, right? And you're like, is he ever gonna come out of this? Probably at some point. All right, let's do it right now. Inhale up nice and tall, and then exhale to our heart center. Let's rest those thumbs on our hearts. Feel your heartbeat in mountain pose. Very nice. Good, for mountain pose, let's get moving even more. Right foot stays planted, facing forward. Step that left foot back, warrior one pose. Good, sink right into it. All right. I need to, let me adjust the camera just a little bit. Cutting off my head, cutting off my head. Can't have that. Okay. All right, right foot forward, left foot back, warrior one. Warrior one, very nice. I just wanted to make sure I was still with you, okay? All right, there we go. Sinking into that warrior one, both feet on the ground, heels to toes, that left foot pointing out to the left side, shoulders roll down and away from where you're sink into that and feel that stretch on to the left side. Good, we'll take a nice big inhale and on the exhale, open up to warrior two. Keeping that front foot and knee right where they're at, just pointing our left foot to the left side of the room, extend those arms front and back. Perfect, I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see that. There we are, warrior two, right foot forward. Let's move to reverse warrior now. Exhale, flip that front hand and inhale, lift it up toward the sky. Keeping that front knee bent, of course you can straighten at any point in time you want if you need a little bit of a breather on that leg, okay? Of course, we're just listening to our body. It's all we're doing. So those right fingertips are reaching as high as they can. Reach as high as they can, lift. Lift so we feel that stretch through the shoulder, through those ribs, and down to that hip. Got a nice strong leg in the back here, and our left glute is engaged and squeezed. So our whole body is working together. Whole body's working together. Stay right here. I'm going to face the front because we're going to move now toward a twist and low lunge. So we're going to cartwheel those arms around and down. Left hand comes to the ground, left heel lifts up off the ground, right hand to the sky. There we go, reach nice and high. Okay, just bear in mind that that left heel is off the ground now. Okay, so we lifted it up, lifted it up. Lift, yeah, that's it, that's the right word I'm using. Okay, go ahead and set that knee down now on that left side. We're setting that knee down, I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see that. Right foot still forward, knee down, shoelace side of that foot. And now let's do a little bit different version of this twisted low lunge from that knee down. Reach back up, there you go. And now we're feeling that hip even more. Now we're feeling that hip even more. Okay. As we exhale that right hand down, we're gonna do reverse warrior from our knee. But we're gonna have a little dynamic here. So we're gonna push forward, push forward, lean into that front leg, and then lift that right hand up. Do that again. Push and lift. Three more times. Push. And left. Keep digging. Push. And left. One more. All right. Very nice. Awesome. From here, let's bring both hands to the instep of our front foot and then curl those toes. Come on. 
keep that uh, left knee up off the ground and find runner's lunge. Good. From runner's lunge, just play around a little bit and find a good stretch here. Maybe both hands to the inside of that foot. Maybe walking those elbows down to lizard pose and getting a little bit deeper. Okay, just enough to kind of make sure that that hip is working and those hamstrings are feeling some warmth. Good. Now from here, we're going to find a right angle pose. Right angle pose. So that right hand is going to stay right there to the inside. Okay, the left heel is going to drop down to the ground, glue that right heel or left heel back down to the ground, and then left hand up toward the sky. Now, if this is a little bit too deep and not feeling good, we can use that block and lift a little bit higher with that right hand or bring that forearm on top of the leg. Just avoid the knee if we're up on top of the leg in right angle. And just bear in mind that those shoulders are stacked, those ribs are stacked, and we're still feeling that good alignment and that breath that's free flowing. That left hand from a little bit more, bring that bicep to our ear overhead and reach for it. Good stuff right there. Good. Awesome. From here, we're going to move into half moon pose, bringing that right hand to the outside of that right foot and then start lifting that left heel up off the ground as we lengthen that right leg. Reach, reach, reach as we stack through those shoulders. Good. Those hips, those ribs are stacked. We're pointing our left toes toward the direction our belly button and heart are facing. Awesome. And then finding, finding a settled position in this pose. What works for us? What works for us? Good. Breathing through this. We're gonna gently, gently come on down, put a bend in that knee, set that left foot down, and then a little bit of warrior two, but go ahead and lengthen that front leg, triangle pose. Breathe in as much as you can, exhale, reach as far forward as you can, and when you can reach no further, it's your body's way of saying, we're there, and tip over. Just tip over and find triangle. Resting your right hand above or below our knee on that leg, back hand to the hip or sky, if you want a little something extra, you can reach overhead with that. You can extend that triangle. Okay, just imagine you're creating that straight line from your fingertips back to your left heel. All right. Very good stretch right there. Feeling it right through our upper body on that left side, ribs and hips. Feeling a nice deep stretch in the inside part of our right leg. Awesome. Take an exhale, back to warrior two. All right. From here, let's find mountain pose right at the front of our mat. Just step forward. There we go. All right, very nice. Same thing, other side. Left foot stays in place, right foot steps back. Let's find warrior one, left foot forward. There we are. Okay, again, both heels to toes on the ground, right foot pointing to the right side. Just feel that right foot, the whole foot on the ground, but try and feel on that pinky toe side of that foot, just pressing in. Finding that depth on that left knee, playing around and experimenting with the depth of that pose. And then we'll make our adjustments on our exhale. So we'll take a nice big inhale, and then exhale the warrior two. Left knee and toe stay right where they're at. Just point your right foot to the right side. Extend those arms front and back. Nice, warrior two. Perfect. I'm going to stay right here in this position, extending those arms, watch those knees, make sure that you can still just take a little peek down and see your big toe, and maybe your second toe, if you're seeing your pinky toes, look where my knee's going, it's going to the inside. We don't want to see those pinky toes, keep those knees going toward the pinky toes, okay? If you're seeing those pinky toes, we'll put a little bit extra pressure on our knee where we don't want it to be. All right, reverse warrior, exhale, flip that left hand and then inhale and bring it up toward the sky. Back hand resting on the leg, tailbone are wrapping around our waist. Good, get that nice depth in that front knee, still toward our toes so it didn't go very far. And we just reach, reach, reach as high as we can through those left fingertips. Outstanding, squeeze in that right glute so if our hips press forward and drive towards the right side, there we go. Our body can stretch itself by engaging through our muscles appropriately. Awesome, a little cartwheel now. Let's find twisted low lunge. Bring those arms around and down. Right hand to the ground. Right heel up off the ground. Twisted low lunge. Whew. 
And then let's drop that right knee down, shoelace side of that foot. I'm going to turn to the side now. Shoelace side of that foot, still twisted low lunge. Maybe feel that a little bit different on that right hip. All right. Both hands are in step. Let's find a little push to reverse warrior. So drive forward, sink forward, and then lift that left hand to the sky. Reach nice and high, stretch the front of our body. Four more times. Let's do that. Here we go. Push, sink into that leg and lift. Good. Push. Exhale and inhale. Two more. Push and lift. Last one. Excellent. Push and lift. Hold just briefly. Breathe into it. Feel that stretch on the right side. And let's bring those hands to the end. Step on our left foot. Now runner's lunge as we curl those toes. Lift that knee up off the ground. And experiment for just a little bit on this runner's lunge. As we know we're heading next. Some deep poses. So let's just still feel that nice stretch across the front of our right hip and quad, and then behind our glutes and hamstrings on that left foot. Okay, we can also bring our arms down, lizard pose, and find a little bit deeper stretch. And if our breath is still going, if it still feels right for us, then we're in the right spot for us, okay? All right, right angle pose, right angle pose. So we're gonna bring that left hand, block it to the inside part of that left leg, right heel down onto the ground, perpendicular to that back foot, and then lift that right hand up to the sky. There we go. And just find the depth that works for you. It can be the ground, it can be the block, or it can be forearm on the leg. Or anywhere in between, you can float that hand and just ask your core to engage a little bit more. Go a little extra overhead with that hand, extend right angle. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Excellent, let's find half moon now. So taking that left hand, Bring it to the outside, the pinky toe side of that left foot. We're gonna start lifting that right heel up off the ground, lengthening that left leg. There we are. And then stack through those arms, those shoulders, those ribs and hips. Creating two planes of alignment. Fingertip to fingertip and crown of our head to our heel. Feel that right glute squeeze. Lift that foot just a little bit more. Okay. And feel that right glute squeeze. All right. As we slowly come back, we're going to bend in that left knee. Find warrior two just briefly. Okay. Then lengthen that front leg. Breathe in. Fill those lungs. Exhale. Reach as far forward as you can. When you can reach no further, tip over. Triangle pose. Back hand to the sky. Can also be on our hip if it bothers your shoulder. Left hand above or below the knee on the leg or use that block. Use that block. And we can also extend triangle. You can try to create that straight line fingertips to our heels or just visualize it if you don't have a mirror in front of you. Just visualize what it looks like. The position of your body. And just make sure it feels right for you. Alright. From here, we're going to put a little bend in our knee and cartwheel those arms around and down. We're going to come down towards the ground and then press back, child's pose. Press back, child's pose. Whew. All right. Child's pose, maybe those knees are separated a little bit wider than those feet and heels. Shoe lace side of your feet if that's comfortable. Just press those hips back towards those heels. Allowing maybe the bridge of our nose and our forehead to come down towards the ground. And then start engaging those arms a little bit so they're dynamic. Crawling those fingertips forward onto our mat and onto the ground. Just a little bit of crawling forward through those fingertips. Through those fingertips. Good. And then with both hands, let's walk them over to the left corner of our mat and sit back into this angled child's pose. So we can stretch the left side of our body out through those ribs and down to our hips. Breathe through this 
and then expand those ribs by breathing in and expanding those lungs. Breathe in as much as you can. Reach into those ribs. There we go. All right. Same thing, the other side. Walk those hands over to the right side. Keep those hands on to the right side. Begin lifting our hips up off our heels. Swing that right leg around. Bring it forward. Bring it forward to the front of our mats. Let's curl those toes and then lift up the crescent pose. Okay, so the back heels up off the ground, thumbs to the back of the room. There we go. Hips and shoulders square to the front of our mats. Soft bend or uh, soft uh, shoulders right there, relaxing them down and away from our ears. Okay. So let's reach in a little bit more into those hips. As we lean forward, lengthen our spine, draw those hands back. A lot of work on that front leg now. Now thumbs to the back of the room, sweep them back. Arch back just a little bit. Same thing again. Exhale forward, and then inhale, arch that back. Just like we were doing with those runner's lunge after those single leg or three-legged dogs. Exhale forward and sweep it back. And then one more time. Exhale forward and sweep it back. Now the next time we exhale forward, let's find warrior three. So putting all the weight of our body into that right foot, lift that left heel up off the ground. Find warrior three, I'm gonna to turn to the side. Show you that. Balance, focus, shoulders and hips square to the ground, shoulders roll back and down away from our ears, hands back by our hips, heart center or forward. Excellent. And now stay keeping that left foot up off the ground. Let's stand with our knee coming up. So standing knee lift. All right. Keeping that knee bent, we're going to take that right hand to the outside of that left leg. Just grab behind the knee and point your left hand behind you, facing the left side. Okay, draw that knee closer towards your heart. So feel that dynamic tension of that right hand pulling that knee towards your heart center a little bit. Very nice. As we exhale, we're going to release and face back front and center. Take that left foot and step it back, both feet still facing forward, heel up off the ground. Heel up off the ground. Okay, a little bend in that front knee, just like crescent pose. Let's focus on that back heel, arch, and calf. So start pushing through those toes and lifting that heel higher and releasing it down. So a little calf raise, right? Push off that foot. Lift that heel, create that space between the heel and our mat. Yeah. And just get a tall posture here. Excellent. Maybe about three or four more of those. Strengthening through those heels and arches and toes. All right. As we finish up with those, we're going to lengthen that front leg and step that back foot into the whole foot's on the ground. Okay, so two variations on this next uh, stretch. Either the toes are up and heel down to the ground, or if you have a block, set your toes on the block. Set your toes on the block. Okay, and just lift those toes up. Square up those hips and shoulders just like pyramid pose, and then begin hinging. Okay? I'll show you a variation without my toes on the block. Okay, heel up off the ground, just come over the top, and I'm just resting my hands above or below my knee onto the leg. Now, if you feel like getting to the ground is enough or good enough for you, or you can get there and it feels right, go ahead and do so. But chances are those muscles are engaged quite a bit, but maybe we're not going quite as deep. Okay. Now we can go ahead and set those toes down if you want, and maybe set a little, little bit more 
into that pyramid pose. Excellent. And then we'll find a twisted triangle. So our left hand stays on the ground or block right hand to the hip or up toward the sky. Inhale it. Good. Good. Deep stretch on the outside of that right hip and glute. On the outside of that leg. Exhale, bring that right hand down. Let's step back. Let's step back and find child's pose. Child's pose. Knees to the outside of those feet, hips to those heels. Press back the child's pose. Again, rest the bridge of that nose and your forehead, and then begin walking those fingertips forward. Get that nice stretch to our shoulders as we keep those arms working. Keep those fingers, just a little bit of creeping on those fingers. And then walk both hands over to the left corner of our mat. Sit back into this angled child's pose. Reaching into our right side of our body now. And then we'll just expand those lungs by breathing in as deeply as we can. Stretching from the inside out to expand those ribs. Keep going, keep going, keep breathing. Very nice, and then same thing, other side. Walk those hands over to the right corner of our mat. And breathe in, expand those ribs. Keeping those hands right where they're at. So we're gonna lift our hips up off our heels. Swing that left leg around. Bring that left leg forward. Curl those right toes, it's fine. Crescent, crescent pose. There we go. Again, squaring up hips and shoulders, deep bend in that left knee, standing nice and tall, ears over shoulders, over hips. And let's sink into those hips a little bit more as we engage our core and exhale, lean forward. Inhale, thumbs to the back of the room, arch back just a little bit. There we go, exhale forward, lean in, use the strength of our body, and then inhale, thumbs to the back. Two more times, exhale forward and inhale, and lift. One more time, exhale and lift. Nice. Then the next time we lean forward and exhale, we're gonna find warrior three. Begin peeling that right heel up off the mat. There we go, all right. Good, hands back, hands at heart center. All right, extend those hands forward. And then just experiment with moving around, just constant motion, finding different places for our body to be. Shoulders roll back, relaxing, maybe dipping in, lifting that right heel a little bit more, feel that squeeze into our glutes and to our lower back. Nice. We're gonna try and keep that right leg off the ground as we stand tall, bring that right knee up. Excellent. Left hand to the outside of that right knee now and hang on to it. Okay, drawing that knee toward our heart. Point our right hand behind us and hold. You can keep that dynamic. Keep that tension on that left hand. On the outside of that knee toward your heart and extend and reach as far back as you can. So we come back to center, that right foot steps back, crescent pose, heel up off the ground. Nice. And then start working those calf raises, press center those right toes, lift that heel, straighten those calves and heels and arches of our feet. Push off the ground. Two more calf raises right there. And then we'll walk that right foot in, whole foot on the ground, heel to toe. Good. Now with our left foot, 
our heel down, toes up off the ground, or rest our toes onto the block, square up our hips and shoulders, and then hinge pyramid pose. So with our toes up like that, of course you can probably already feel that those muscles are already being engaged. They're already being lengthened. And so, we may not be able to go as deeply as we normally go in this pose with our toes down to the ground. And that's just the whole point of kind of listening to our body. Listening to our body. Now if you want, remove that block or set those toes down and then settle in just a little bit more. Helps you feel the difference right there, yeah? Good. And then let's find that right hand on the block or floor, left hand up to the hip or sky, twisted triangle. Opening up our heart to the left side. Hips still staying square. Nothing you have to do there. There's nothing you can do about it. Just gonna happen. And what you want to key on in is the breath, keeping that breath free flowing, right heel still on the ground as best you can. Very nice. As we exhale, both hands down and step back to a plank position. We're gonna drop back to downward facing dog. And then float that right heel up toward the sky. Bring it up nice and high, put a bend in our knee and open our hip. Make sure our arms are still long and strong, soft bend in those elbows. Feel that stretch along the right side of our body. From here, bring that right foot through to the front of our mat. Glue that back foot down, warrior two pose. There we go. All right, I'm gonna turn to the side. Turn it to the side, right foot forward, left foot perpendicular to that right, arms out, nice and wide. Good. Okay, so a little rock forward and back, but let's take one palm, let's take that front palm and lift it up toward the sky, the back one is down. And as we rock forward and back, we're gonna switch the palms so that they're facing in opposite directions. Ready, let's go, rock forward and back. Keeping those legs quiet, nothing else is moving except through our spine, rocking forward and back. We'll exhale forward, inhale as we stand tall. Give me two more, forward and back. Let's find warrior two, good, right there. Take that right hand now and just grab onto your left hip. And as we lean forward, bring that left hand to the hip or up toward the sky. Find right angle pose, hanging on to your left hip bone with that right hand. Good. And maybe try and look at that left hand in the sky if we want to extend that right angle. Very nice. Let's come back to warrior two on the exhale. Take that left hand now, grab on to the right wrist, and then pull it up toward the sky. Pull it up toward the sky. Palm facing to the left side. Do a reverse warrior with a little bit of encouragement, if you will. <laughs> All right, front knee still bent. Front knee still bent, but keep the hands right there lengthen that front leg. Reach even higher. Stretch the front side of your body even more. Okay, with that right hand now, release that right hand and bring it and grab on to your left hip like we did earlier. And then lean forward, extending triangle this time. Or tip forward. And find triangle pose without the support of that bottom arm. Breathe. Feel my heart rate getting there. You're probably feeling your heart rate getting there. Yeah? All right, a little bend in that knee. Bring those arms down. Let's press back the plank and then downward facing dog. Good stuff. 
I'm gonna turn the other way. All right. From downward dog, left heel floats up toward the sky. Put a bend in that knee, open the hip. Strong arms here, watch that one doesn't get a little bit soft and sink in. And then feel that stretch on the left side of our body. Good breaths right here. Let's go ahead and bring that left foot through to the front of our mat. Glue that right foot down, warrior two. Sink in, arms long. All right. Good posture here. Left palm facing up toward the sky. We're gonna rock forward and back and flip those hands. There we go. Forward and back. Exhale and inhale. Okay, we got it. This is all about that core strength and core engagement. So the legs are doing nothing. They're not moving at all. Which means we have that strong foundation. Strong foundation. Give me three more. Three more. Exhales and inhales. Okay, we got it. And then we'll find that warrior two. Take that left hand, grab one to your right hip, front knee still bent, and then that right hand up toward the sky. Extend that right angle reach. Nice and high. We can also just keep it right here on the hip as we tip forward. Breathe, engage your core, play around with that depth, and engage. All right. Awesome stuff right there. Let's find that warrior two. Warrior two yet again. So with that right hand, we're gonna grab onto that left wrist, left palm facing the right side, reach on up, reverse warrior, with some coaxing, if you will, front knee still bent, sinking into those legs and then just reach. My hands are out of view a little bit. Let me make sure y'all can see that. Okay. Great stretch on the front side of our body now. Hitting into those ribs and down to our hips. Let's keep those hands right where they're at. Lengthen that front leg, reach even higher. Reach even higher. Not back, but up toward the sky. Up toward the ceiling, reach even more. Excellent. Triangle pose from here, left hand comes on to that right hip, right hand up overhead, tilt forward, tip forward, like triangle pose without the support of that left arm. Exhale back to warrior two. And then let's step forward, mountain pose, front of our mats. Very nice, let's take a seat. Let's take a seat. Coming on down toward the ground. Okay. Feet forward, knees bent. Feet about, let's say hip distance apart. Maybe a little bit more. We're just gonna begin just windshield wiping our legs side to side, hands to the side. Hands to the side, just to give you that support. Okay. So maybe separate those feet just a little bit more. So as we go side to side, those knees are settling right to the inside arch of your opposite foot. Opposite knee to opposite foot. So one more time, either direction. And then we're gonna bring both knees to the right side, setting our left knee into the right arch. Sitting right here, okay? And begin just turning towards that right knee, left hand on the knee, and that right hand on the ground behind us, and rotate and face behind us. Okay, I'm gonna turn a little bit more towards front and center so you can see that. Okay, there we are. And then turn, stay tall. Press that right foot into that left knee. And if you're pressing that in, you might feel a little stretch right here at the top of that quad. A little rotation. Good. So we exhale, come back to center. Keep that right hand on the ground. Just lift the left hand up and then the hips up off the ground, mermaid. 
do is reach him straight up towards the sky or overhead, bicep to that ear. And then exhale, release down. With that right leg right there, still in front of us. Let's bring that left leg all the way behind us, six o'clock. Just sweep it back. Maybe we have to lift a little bit and walk that foot around to find pigeon pose. I'll turn to the side. So half pigeon, we can stay right up nice and tall into proud pigeon, shoelace side of that back foot. Or we can exhale down to our elbows, rest our forehand down to our fists or on to that block. And just settle in and breathe. Another option is that space between the glutes and your mat on that right hip. You can place that block there so we have a little target to press into. That will help us keep our hips square because that's one of the objectives of the alignment here to try and keep those hips square to the ground or floor beneath us. Take about four more breaths right here, so settle in. So as we come out of this, let's just sit down onto our side. Let's swing both legs back around, back towards the front of our mats, feet about hip distance, maybe a little wider, and then hands side to side, or to our sides as we bring our knees side to side back to those windshield wipers. Okay, just getting it to where we're setting those knees into the soles of our feet, those arches of our feet. couple more times. And then the next time we see those knees going to the left side, set that right knee into your left arch. Good. And just stay right there, both knees down. Take that right hand to the outside of that left knee, left hand behind you, and rotate and twist. Stay tall. Kind of feel that left foot press into the knee just a little bit so you feel maybe a little stretch on that right quad. Rotate, come back around, left hand still on the ground, inhale the right hand up toward the sky, lift those hips up off the ground, reach straight up or overhead. to our backs now, grab behind those knees and lock those ankles, and lay down. We're going to lengthen our right leg and create a little figure four with our left leg, setting the sole of our left foot on the inside part of our right leg, either at the knee or above, okay? So it's like half reclining goddess, okay? Or half of a butterfly, so that left knee is out, figure four. And then from here, just try and lift those hips up just a little bit. Squeeze those glutes and lift those hips and release them down. And again, keep doing that. Just squeeze through those glutes. Feel those hips just lift a little bit. Okay, and then release them down. Full weight of your hips onto the ground. Do that about three more times. Lift those hips. So you should feel a stretch in through your groin and in through those hips. Exhale, release down as we squeeze and engage those glute muscles. Two more. And there we go. All right. 
Now with that left leg, let's bring that ankle above the right knee, left toes toward the shins, and put a bend into that right knee. So we have that figure four position, foot on the ground. Foot on the ground, let's take those hands and shoot through the gap between that figure four, grab behind our right knee, and then bring our right foot up toward the sky as we lengthen that leg, and then draw our right toes toward the crown of our head. So again, a stretch, a little supinated pigeon or on our back version of pigeon on our left hip and then a hamstring stretch onto our right leg. Take two more breaths right here. Ready, set your right foot fully on to the ground, heel to toe. Keep that right left ankle right above that knee. Hands to the side, single leg bridge with that pigeon leg. Inhale, lift those hips and hold. Lift a little higher. Keep holding. Exhale, release. Let's do that one more time. And inhale, lift. Dropping that left knee down. That left knee just open up externally. Open that hip just a little bit more. Breathe and lift those hips. Squeeze through those glutes. See how high we can get those hips to go. Exhale, release on down. Very nice. So that same sequence on the other side, lengthen that left leg, put a bend in that right leg in the right foot, put the sole of that foot into the left leg. So creating a little figure four shape or like that half goddess position. Hands to the side and we're gonna lift our hips just a little bit. They don't have to leave the ground at all, but we're gonna lift our hips as we squeeze our glutes. Just stretching into the front side of our hips here. And then release down, give you that four more times at your own pace. Inhale, squeeze those glutes, hips lift. So we're just feeling a little bit of lightness through those hips. Maybe they're just hovering off the ground just a little bit, just based on how it's feeling for you today. And that's fine. Then we exhale and press fully in. Let the full weight of our body settle down. Keep going, total five right here. five. We're going to bring our right ankle above our left knee, right toes toward our shins, and then put a bend into our left knee, full foot on the ground. Let's take those hands and shoot through that figure four, grab it behind our left knee. As we lengthen that left leg, sole that foot up toward the sky, draw those toes toward the crown of our head. So a little pigeon with the hamstring stretch. And breathe. Last inhale and exhale, we'll set that left foot on the ground, heel to toe, and then lift those hips up, keeping that right leg right where it's at, dropping that right knee down and hold. Single leg bridge with that pigeon hold. Hips lift higher, and then exhale, release down. We'll do that one more time. Inhale on up, and then hold. a little bit higher, a little bit more. Drop that right knee. Exhale and release. Very nice. All right, let's find Shavasana. Let's find our relaxation, final relaxation pose. Sprawl out onto our mats. Feel our bodies 100% onto our mats and fully present right 
in this moment. So I'm going to dim the lights and continue to guide us through Shavasana. The closing song in Shavasana is Dancing on My Own. Dancing on My Own even though we probably learned how to dance from our mothers. As we find Shavasana, relax and release. Find the most comfortable position you can on your mat, right where you're at. Allow yourself to release through those arches and those toes. Soften those calves. And allow those glutes to press into the surface beneath you. Shoulders relaxed and they're down and away from our ears. As those arms are just hanging beside us with the full weight of those arms. Hands released and relaxed, palms open, hands up and down. And then allow our face to be expressionless, a little space between our teeth and our lips as we relax our jaw. And if it's comfortable, relaxing our eyelids onto our eyes and just softening through our face and neck and head and trying to find stillness with where we're at and when we find stillness we allow our mind and our body to feel the sensations of our practice today to feel the benefits of what we are able to do for ourselves in our own practice to allow that practice to sink in even more deeply connecting even more deeply our mind and our body and our spirits. We have so much to be grateful for, and especially for those mothers, we have so much to honor for what they do. They're the rocks of our family, they keep things going, they keep things flowing. They keep us in line, they keep us happy, they keep us healthy. They encourage us, they support us, and they are tough when we need it. Where would we be? Where would our drop of water in that ocean be? without these women in our life. My closing message. Happy Mother's Day to the working moms, to the moms that work out of their homes with their coworkers, to the organized moms and perhaps the always running late moms. To the anxious moms and the calm moms, to the tired moms and the restless moms, to the young moms and to the older moms, to the married moms and single ones, to the ones who have small babies and ones who have babies who are grown, and to perhaps those moms that are no longer with us today, but we keep them near and dear to our hearts. All moms are amazing and we all have a reason to honor them today. I honor the love and might in each of you as it's also within me. Namaste.